Hey, hi everyone. In this video, we learn how we can have like two agents run in parallel in a multi AI agent workflow in Langgraph. So the whole point of building this multi AI agent system is like maybe in some use cases, we want two agents to work in parallel on two different things, two independent things. And then later on, it can merge and another agent can look at output given by both of these agents that were running in parallel and then give a final output or some, something of that sort. So in this example, we'll do exactly that. We'll build a multi AI agent workflow with where we have like two agents running in parallel. So let me just paste the schema or of the state that we are going to work upon. And let me also introduce you to, to the problem a little. We won't be using LLMs again in this, but we'll just build the graph and update the states to show you like how we can have parallel agents update the states. What we are going to do is uh, we have this financial reports, annual financial reports. And we want to get to this final decision report where we have like a summarized version of that report, which allows us to take, make a decision based on this summary. So what we are going to do is there will be two agents running in parallel and one of the agents will be responsible to extract financial metrics from the report. And the other agent is going to do sentiment analysis of that report. So these two agents will be running in parallel and updating these respective attributes in the state. And once we have both of these attributes, it will go to the third agent. It will look at these financial metrics and sentiment ana analysis uh, report. And then finally give us the final report, uh, which is like the combined one. These two agents will run in parallel. They don't have anything to do, uh, which depends on each other. So that's why we can run them in parallel. And then uh, this uh, final agent will see the output of both of these things. I'm also maintaining like an aggregate messages coming from all these three agents, just so we know like how the flow is going and messages are getting added, but it's not really uh, needed or required for our use case. Uh, also in this one, in this example, I've uh, added annot annotated and uh, used operator.add. So you'll see like in the previous example, when we built like a very uh, basic graph, I highly urge you to look at that video if you haven't already. It will clear up a lot of things about states and uh, how agents update the states. Uh, but in the, this example, we are using operator.add. So uh, just like previous example, we don't have to append it uh, to the aggregate. We can just return the aggregate message and it will automatically be appended. I'll show you how it's done in the node. Uh, but that is also one more thing that we can learn here. So yeah, the input is going to be the report URL. So uh, everything is mentioned in the state. Uh, this is going to be the input. Uh, this is, these two are going to be like intermediate output, you can say, and this is going to be our final output. And aggregate just keeps a track of, uh, you know, all the aggregate results that we have. Like it's not needed, but just for us to learn something more. Also, this is a state that I came up with. Uh, I have designed this, uh, but uh, for your use case, you can, you know, think of designing it in a different way uh, how these agents work and all. You can have like a complete uh, different kind of workflow in your mind altogether. Yeah, so just keep keep the mind open. Like don't be rigid just because I showed you one state and you have to stick to it. It's nothing like that. Please uh, go ahead and experiment with other states and design better workflows and all. Uh, once we have designed the state, let's uh, design the nodes or the agents as we call it. Uh, so there are three agents that we have. Two will run in parallel. So this is the financial metric extractor agent and this is the sentiment analyzer agent. So this uh, financial metric extractor agent will just extract out the financial metrics. So let's say like something like revenue and EPS. So it will read uh, the report URL from the state and it will do the processing here. So maybe it will use the uh, URL, get the report, scrape it, uh, get the text. And from that text, it will maybe call an LLM to actually finally get these values. And it'll, it may, uh, after parsing, it may look something like this. So that is where we have reached now. Uh, all the logic that I just discussed, it's pretty straightforward, like using LLMs and all. Uh, I'm already guessing like you would have worked with LLMs if you're learning about line graph at this point. So it should be uh, pretty much clear to you. So let's say we reach this stage and we have the extracted metrics and we can update the state now. So this financial metrics, uh, we update using this extracted metrics. It's a dictionary. We have defined it as a dictionary here as well. And then we just add it to the aggregate by send, sending like this list. But in this case, we just send uh, one uh, element in this list which is extracted metrics itself. So we don't have to, uh, you know, write, uh, read the aggregate message and then append it uh, like we did in the last video. But since we are using operator.add, we just need to return uh, one value and it will automatically be appended or added 
to the list. So this is about financial metric extractors. A sentiment analyzer works similar way. So this is the sentiment analysis report that will be generated something like that, uh, like line three is positive, line 45, something like, uh, you know, whatever, however you have designed your uh, agent to be. Again, it will read the report URL, pass it through LLM, get uh, maybe the sentiments, or it need not be LLM as well. It can be like a model which actually gets you the value of positive, negative, neutral, and some classification probabilities and all. And then we just uh, update the state again. So these two agents, uh, they work independently and we'll see how it's done in parallel. But then we have this final report generator agent, which will read these two values from the state. And then it'll make some crazy report, which, which you can, you know, base your decision upon. This will also be updated in the state in the fi final decision report. And I'm also passing it through aggregate. So uh, once we have uh, updated these nodes, let's actually start building the graph. So I'm using the end node here. Uh, we had used start before. We can also use something called end uh, is just to stop the graph. Uh, the, when we actually run, run the graph. It, it's good to have like an end node. So we define the state graph with the state schema that we have designed here. And then uh, we add these nodes, three nodes are there. So in this case, uh, I'm adding a node name here. If you are giving a string and then the function call will be this, uh, like whatever agent. So just so you know, this uh, nodes can be added in this way itself. In the last video, we just gave it the function, node function. And by default, whatever the name of the function is, that is taken as the node name itself. But we can give like a different node name uh, just in case if you want uh, by giving in this function. So I've added these three nodes and then we have this edge. So this is where uh, we'll define like the parallelism. As soon as it starts, it will go to this me matrix extractor and also start will go to sentiment extractor. So we have like start and then it goes to two agents. And then uh, this final report agent will will add edges from both of these metrics extractor and sentiment extractor to final report uh, generator agent. So this is that final report generator node that we have. And then finally, final final report uh, agent will go to end node. So that's how we'll define the graph. Compile it. Uh, let's just visualize the graph once. Okay, it took a while. I don't know. I ran it like some multiple times, and finally we got the graph. So there was some issue, I guess. Uh, but it's fine. So we see uh, it goes through two agents, uh, matrix extractor and sentiment extractor, and then we get the final report. So these two agents are supposed to run in parallel, and that is what is going to happen when we run this graph. So let's uh, run the graph. Uh, we'll give some uh, report URL. Like right now, we are not, not actu actually scraping or anything, so it doesn't matter. But uh, we'll actually give the report for which we want to uh, you know, generate the final decision summary. Uh, it happened very fast because there's no uh, LLM calls or anything, but uh, we get this uh, final state. Financial metrics were extracted, sentiment analysis was done, and then uh, this final report was, uh, you know, generated. And in aggregate, you can see like all the output of all the agents were added like one by one in the list. It was appended. So this was the financial extractor, sentiment analyzer, and, and the final report. We can also uh, have like, uh, a time delay just to show you how this works. Let's also add like a print statement uh, so that we know like which uh, state is called. So whenever this function is executed, we'll see this print statement. Uh, and then let's say uh, among these two agents, uh, sentiment analysis took, took some time. So let's say it took like uh, three seconds so that we at least see something. Uh, yeah and now when we define the graph and now when we start running it so we see this print statements uh, so sentiment analyzer agent called uh, i didn't add the new line i guess i should uh, add new line uh, yeah actually it's fine so uh, sentiment agent uh, uh, sentiment was called and then uh, if you see uh, it stopped for a while so n now financial metrics extractor was called sentiment was called and it stopped for two seconds and then final report generator agent was called. So this final report generator agent waits till both of these agents are done uh, generating their output and only then uh, it starts working. So just let me just run it once again. So both of these agents are called and then final one is called once both of them are done. So that is what uh, this is for like if even if one of the agents take more time it will still wait for one agent to be done 
and only then the final agent will work so that's how you can have like two agents working in parallel i also want to quickly show you like what happens if we have like two agents in one of the branches so it's quite possible that uh, we want to go parallel but in one of the branch there's only one single agent working and in the second branch there are two agents working so let's uh, build another graph so in this case uh, we'll do something like financial metrics ext will be extracted and sentiment analysis will also be done but an intermediate sent just pure sentiment report will be generated based on the sentiment analysis and this report will be passed uh, to this financial decision report so minor tweak in the design so that uh, it's more robust and it's it's paying more attention to the sentiment values this is our hope but yeah this fits the use case and let's add uh, our four nodes now so this time we have four nodes one is financial metrics extractor is the same as above sentiment analyzer same as above we have this sentiment report generator now which will uh, you know take in the sentiment analysis and uh, generate its own report just purely based on sentiment analysis and this will be aggregated with financial metrics later on by this agent sorry this agent should read intermediate report and based on this intermediate report it will come up with this final decision report uh, which we can read and make our decisions on so this is how the agent is uh, agents are set up now in this workflow uh, let's just uh, build this graph again this graph is like similar but we have like added one more uh, node here sentiment report generator so metrics extractor goes to the final report sentiment extractor goes to sentiment report and then sentiment report goes to final report so this is the only uh, change that we have and then once we build this we can print the graph so i hope the visualization was already clear but here here it is for you to visualize it and now we can uh, run this graph so with the same test oh we have gotten an error so yeah this error uh, it's like you will also see this error it's because of the fact the way that we have designed our uh, graph so what happens in lang graph is uh, when we do the start it only considers the fan out as one super step so it will try to run these two in one step and then once these two are done since met metrics extractor goes through final report it will execute final report in any case even if uh, this is not done so and it will also run final report again when sentiment report is done so it will run two times but the first time when it tries to run it tries to read this uh, intermediate sentiment report which is not not being generated so the way to uh, you know in lang graph the way to tell to generate final report uh, only after uh, these nodes are done is we put it in the list so uh, we don't add this this edge but we only put uh, these two edges here and instead of uh, putting only sentiment report we put metrics extractor as well but in a list format so this should do that do the trick so what we have done here is from start we'll go to metrics extractor and from start we'll go to sentiment extractor as well so that, that those are the two edges let me just completely remove this edge and from sentiment extractor we are going to sentiment report which is fine and then from both of these so only when metrics extractor and sentiment report is done only then we'll execute final report and then final report goes to end this is what it means uh, in lang graph we have to do it this way when we want to force a node to run only when all these nodes are done so that's how you uh, write it in lang graph and uh, we see like there is no change in graph as such uh, it's it's the is the same but uh, it's telling lang graph that hey run it at the end now the error is gone it's working all fine and then we are getting all these intermediate values and the final report uh, like we saw earlier uh, we get this aggregate as well so you can put uh, some print statements here uh, and also some time delay here as well to uh, you know experiment uh, with however you want uh but yeah that is the idea like uh, uh, to have like a little bit more complexity in your graph you can use this uh, uh, list of nodes to indicate that hey these nodes should be done processing before you run this uh, you can also do one more uh, interesting thing here both of these uh, nodes take input as a report url both of them will be scraping the report uh, processing them so you can have another node here maybe Uh, just as a pre-processing step, which takes the URL and processes that URL and gets the text and maybe updates that back to the state, 
and then that new value will be accessed by both of these to do their respective jobs that is one minor design tweak uh, that i can think of that uh, you know you can do as a as a homework but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you uh, in some next video bye